Well, hey guys, and welcome back. My name is Jessica Likewise. I am the CEO of Hope Education Services. After 13 years of doing ABA, I'm sitting for my exam, and I'm making videos while I'm studying to help you study along with me. So smash that like button, follow the videos, and we'll study together. Today, we're gonna to talk about what a data artifact is. And in order to do that, I'm also gonna help you understand what whole interval, partial interval, recording and time sampling is. So stay tuned. Well, hey guys, and welcome back to the show. Today, we're gonna to talk a little bit about what a data artifact is. So a data artifact is when something appears to exist or appears not to exist simply because the way that it's measured. So oftentimes people think that a data artifact is a mistake. Someone measured something incorrectly. That's not actually true. A data artifact is always accurate in the way that it's measured, but the measurement itself was flaws flawed and it made it appear as though something occurred or didn't occur that didn't really occur. So that may sound really confusing. So what does that actually mean? So whenever you're trying to figure out how often a behavior occurs, I always think the best way to do that is a rate. You want to know, right, how many times per hour, per minute, or two hours, whatever the interval is, I always like to say per hour, it's just easy, how much time, how often a behavior occurred. So let's talk about if we're gonna have Angelina and we wanna figure out how many times she's getting up out of her seat in class. Let's say she does it seven times per hour. That gives you a really clear idea of exactly how often it happened. However, sometimes it's not always possible to use a rate. Typically, there's two reasons for that. Number one, it just occurs way too often to be able to count it, right? If something occurs, let's say 300 times in a day, it is very unlikely even a really trained observer is going to be getting the exact same score as another trained observer just because it occurs so often the likelihood of missing something is there. The second reason is because of limitations or constraints. So if we're recording a behavior in a classroom, the teacher has to pay attention to all the kids in the classroom, not just Angelina. So chances are she's not going to be able to sit there with a clicky um, ticket counter and count exactly how many times Angelina got out of her seat. So what do you do? You use another type of recording measure, typically called interval recording. Interval recording will give you a percentage of time, which is an approximation percentage of time that a behavior occurred in a given time period. So there are three types of interval recording. The first one is whole interval recording, partial interval recording, and time sampling. Now, all three of these have their point and purpose. However, because it is an approximation of how often a behavior occurred, there is a risk of, with all of those procedures of either overestimating or underestimating how often a behavior occurs. When that's the case, it's called a data artifact. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna define all three types of those recording measures for you and give you an example of how each one could potentially cause a data artifact. So let's look at whole interval recording. Now, whole interval recording, you record a behavior as having occurred if and only if it occurs for the entire interval um, that you're measuring. Typically, this is used when you want to increase, not decrease the behavior. So let's look at the example of Angelina and how she could sitting in her seat, right? So if you want to reduce Angelina getting out of her seat, you might use a whole interval recording where you're delivering reinforcement and counting whether or not Angelina stays in her seat for the entire interval, the entire interval. So let's say it's going to be 20 minute intervals. Now, the good thing, the one thing to point out is that the longer the intervals are, the more chance there is going to be for inaccurate or not inaccuracy, but creating a data artifact. It's the terms you have to be careful with, especially when taking the exam, because it is still accurate. It's just not a great reflection of what really happened. So colloquially, we call it inaccurate, but in ABA terms, it's just a data artifact. So let's just say in this example, the example is, okay, every 20 minutes, if Angelina is sitting for the entire minute, it counts as plus rate right? when you're recording data the behavior occurred if it's a minus it didn't occur so let's just say during the first interval angelina she just gets up and stretches and she's up for like literally two or three seconds maximum sits back down well that would then that entire interval would be minus the behavior didn't occur during that interval let's say during the second interval angelina sharpens her, pen, her pencil break she has to get up and sharpen it well naturally you're going to be getting up a little bit right it's unlikely you're going to have the zero percent for an entire day of sitting in your seat so that also is recorded as as a you know minus she didn't stay in her seat for that entire 20 minutes let's see the third time she actually does stand up her teacher tells her to sit back down she sits right back down immediately well in this example using whole interval recording it's going to show that angelina stayed in her seat for zero percent of the intervals zero percent of the intervals in the class 
well, is that really what happened, right? In reality, she got up once, maybe for like two, three seconds. She had to sharpen her pencil, that happens. And then, you know, she got up for a second and the teacher told her to sit back down. So she sat right back down. In reality, Angelina was sitting for almost the entire class period, but using whole interval recording, it made it look like she didn't sit down at all. She was standing up for the entire time. Well, that is an example of a data or measurement artifact. Those two are used interchangeably. So if you see either word in your exam, if you see either word while studying, a data artifact and a measurement artifact are exactly the same thing. So let's look at another example. Let's look at partial interval recording. Partial interval recording records whether or not something happens at any point during the interval. And again, this has a really high chance of over-exaggerating how often something happened. So let's just use an example of Lisa talking out of turn in class. So let's give an example. Let's talk about how Lisa could be talking at a turning class. So let's say that the teacher wants to reduce the amount of time Lisa's talking at a turning class. They want to measure it using partial interval recording. So they're going to, again, break it into three intervals. If at any point during that 20 minute interval, Lisa says anything at all to her friends, it's considered to be an incorrect response. It's happening at any point during the interval. Inter partial interval recording is typically used to reduce the behavior to say. So during this example, let's just say in the first 20 minutes, Lisa, one point, she looks over at her friend and says like, hey, give me a pencil, I can borrow, can I borrow a pencil? Her, teacher, her friend gives her a pencil and she goes, thank you. And then, okay, minus, right? Because she talked to her friend during the period. And let's just say during, you know, another, the second interval, a friend drops a piece of paper on the floor, Lisa picks it up and she hands it to her friend. So here you go. And again, Lisa's talking. Well, if the behavior plan would say it's written that no matter what she talks to her friends, then it's an incorrect response. Or let's just say even she, in the third interval, she just turns around and makes a joke to her friend. They laugh, but they're back on task within, you know, five seconds. Kids do that. That's normal, right? So now, Again, it looks like 100% of the time Lisa was talking at a turning class. When in reality, if you add up the actual total amount of time that she was talking out of turning class, it might be like 10 seconds. Even if, let's just say, the behavior occurred quickly in all 20 minute intervals and it wasn't just someone dropping a paper, it was Lisa just turning around and talking to her friend for a couple seconds. You know, if she was really just talking at a turn for, you know, three times in an hour and it, it was very fast, is saying that she was 100% of the time talking at a turn using interval recording, that's probably not really accurate, right? That's our, excuse me, not a good reflection. It is accurate using the data measure. This is, again, you have to be so careful, but it's not really a good reflection of what happened. So it's considered to be a data artifact. So let's go on to example three, which is time sampling. Time sampling simply means you record whether a behavior occurs at the end of an interval. So you set a timer, let's say you set it for every 10 minutes, and then if a behavior occurs, when the 10 minute timer goes off, if it's occurring at the moment, the timer goes off, then you count it as plus. And if it's not occurring at the time the timer goes off, it's a minus. So let's talk about Tommy. Let's say he does hand flapping. Let's just say he's hand flapping in a session for like 55 out of 60 minutes. He's hand flapping almost the entire session and you're using time sampling to measure it. So the therapist, she sets the timer, let's just say for, you know, every 10 minutes, there's gonna be six intervals in an hour. Let's just say that two out of those um, 10 intervals, it happened to be that he was hand flapping, but for eight out of the 10 intervals, it just so happens that we're like the only times in the session where he actually had his hands nice. So he, the data looks like he was hand flapping for 20% of the time. When in reality, we know that if we were using a partial interval recording, it probably would have been 100% of the time, right? So the 20% of the time is not really a good reflection of what happened because in reality, he was hand flapping almost the entire session, but the data didn't really make it look that way. That's again called the data artifact. So as you can see, whenever you're using a interval measurement procedure, there's always a risk of a, in a, a behavior be occurring at it or looking like it occurred much more often or much less often than it actually occurs. So what does this actually mean? Well, two things. You should always use a rate if possible. You know, when you're working in a session individually with the child, if you don't have those constraints, I like to always use a rate. And number two, when you are using an interval measure, you have to, to be cautious when making decisions and keep in mind the fact that there is that risk of over or underestimating a behavior. So I really hope this has helped you study. I really hope this helps you understand what those definitions are. You know, as I'm studying, I really want to support you help you study. If you want a more detailed explanation of this or you want to know any of the other terms, head over to my website, hopeeducationservices.com. I have all my study notes posted as blog posts. They're not grammatically 
edited. So they're just my study notes, but they're on there for free and they're a gift for you to use them to study. So I really hope this helps. Again, subscribe to this channel. I'm putting out videos just like this one every day as I'm studying so we can pass our exam together. So have an amazing day and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Music